Welcome to uh, today's session, uh, sponsored by uh, Vuvio Technologies. And uh, the discussion will be centered around using knowledge automation to improve your environmental performance. Next chart, Christian. As Mark briefly stated, uh, we, Vuvio, are honored to have uh, one of our distinguished customers, Mr. Glenn McCrimmon. And uh, he's got over 25 years of experience in the oil and gas industry in various positions, ranging from management to innovation. And so uh, now he's currently vice chair of Clean Resource Innovation Network, and he'll say more about his role later on in the presentations. Uh, I, Ron, a lead moderator, has over 36 years of uh, manufacturing experience ranging from uh, plant managers to uh, lead in reliability and maintenance for the corporation. And of course, we have Christian McDermott, who's our market coordinator, and he bridges uh, all matters between our North American operations and our European uh, headquarters and operations. Next chart, Christian. So today, the focus for Vuvio is uh, on the environmental, okay? Uh, competency. We've also give webinars on uh, capacity, uh, operational excellence, uh, training and development, and uh, improving efficiency, and of course, maintenance overhauls. But today, we're going to focus on the environmental space. Um, with this, I'm sharing some data on what uh, is considered the top five environmental problems facing industry today. And in no ranking order, Permit exceedances, uh, permit violations, Title V deviations, all of which can uh, spell trouble for from a compliance standpoint. Uh, excessive flaring of processed gases is very common. And uh, even though flaring is an acceptable practice for safety and maintenance clear up reasons, uh, just the visibility of flaring kind of signals to your local community that things may not quite be in control and you've in upset conditions. Um, there are also a lot of community issues uh, and perceptions that the um, emissions that industry is emitting causes some latent health concerns and uh, that some of the hazards materials are indeed hazards. There's also this climate impact and just about everyone in industry is powering some type of net zero carbon reduction or strategy. And of course, changes in regulatory philosophy based on your government makeup. So all of these make it pretty competitive uh, in the uh, manufacturing environment. Next chart, Christian. This is uh, just a, a quote from uh, two different sources. And it speaks of the fact that 50% of incidents um, occur during equipment startups and shutdowns. And those are human errors for the most part, most part that are preventable. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about how that basically causes environmental issues for the, for the industry. The center of this chart speaks to a critical intersection where your assets are integrated with the field operator task. We invest a tremendous amount of money in deploying advanced technologies that provide visibility into both the life cycle and the performance of the equipment. And we do that by merging data from a couple of different inputs. An example would be a lubrication uh, analysis program, vibration analysis program, and of course, machine learning, just to name a few. We know that the equipment effectiveness, the asset uptime is very, very critical to being competitive in today's operating environment. Vuvio has expanded and extended on that concept by providing unique automated data relative to the knowledge of the operator. And when we speak of knowledge, we mean the operator's ability to execute those critical tasks as they were designed or as they are required. So that's very important and is coupled with the equipment piece to make for a very, very good and strong business and operating environment. We'll talk a little bit more about our ability to analyze and offer actionable intelligence 
to help with the operator reliability piece later on in our discussion. So at this point, uh, Christian will share uh, a preview of our solution and platform. Thank you, Ron. Um, so hopefully everyone can see my screen. So we're going to take a look at um, how you can capture your plant's expertise in a visual and digital format so that operators can master procedures um, and prevent any accidental releases or other incidents. Um, since I'm showing you this live, um, there might be a delay between what I'm showing you and what I say. Um, and what I'm gonna, going to show you may appear a little bit jerky, but um, if you were doing this on your own laptop um, in person, it would be totally smooth. So first, I'm going to start off with um, showing you how operators can familiarize themselves uh, with their unit um, in a digital format here. So I'm walking through a digital replica of a real plant. And operators, you know, for onboarding of new hires or even um, experienced operators, they're able to walk around um, and visually uh, look at their real plant um, and interact with the equipment as well. Uh, they're also able to find things, um, you know, those drain valves or bleeds. Um, and you'll see that the equipment is clearly labeled. So not only can you walk around as I was just doing, but you can stop and look at clearly labeled equipment um, and actually interact with it. So it is a simulatable environment as well as um, just being a visual walkthrough. Um, so even experienced operators, you can search for that, you know, those specific valves or pieces of equipment by typing it into a searchable index. So, here I'm just typing in um, an ID number for a for a drain valve. You can select it, and it will take you straight to where that valve is located. Um, and this is the valve that I was looking for. So <coughs> operators can also um, use enhanced views to um, to view uh, valve lineups or lockout tagouts, and what I've done here is I've, I've got a complex manifold here. I, I've activated the flows, and you'll see these green boxes. These represent valves. So if you look on the very right of, what, uh, of the screen, I'm going to um, open and close some of these valves, and you'll see that the flow corresponds to the state of that valve. So you have a real clear view of how to line uh, valves up. What about procedures? So basically, this converts your written operating uh, instructions into a tool that provides total visibility of your actual assets, of your field assets. So this is like a virtual SME, and, and we call this a simulator. So let me explain what you're looking at. So you have the replica, which I was just showing you here on the right. And below that, you have the map. And you have your procedure here on the left. Now, this could be any critical procedure, as Ron said, you know, startups or shutdowns. Um, above that, we have an action checklist. Now, this action checklist um, allows us to break every single step of your procedure into individual actions because you have to execute one action at a time. So you'll see here that I can actually perform the first step and I physically have to close the first drain valve. And once I've closed it, I confirm and it moves to the next step. So it's very much like a virtual SME, as I said. Um, we know that procedures are often very generic in nature. Um, so if the procedure says close all the drain valves, but there's 11 of them, we would have 11 separate line items up here in the in the checklist. So you can do them in the correct sequence and you will not forget one of them. In addition, we have knowledge snippets. So you'll see this box that appeared and this is where you can capture that uh, expertise um, from your senior operators and store it in exactly the right location where it needs to be. In this case, it's a piece of text that tells you why this valve is left open, but it could be a video 
um, or some other caution or warning, um, which will help the operator learning this procedure uh, in that very moment. So as you complete each step, the system will walk you around the unit and guide you through this procedure. So the point here is that operators can learn and practice procedures, uh, you know, things that they normally don't get to practice, um, such as emergency or unusual situations. Um, and, you know, Ron will allude to this later, but environmental data shows that um, that long reaction times to unusual events uh, can generate higher uh, than permitted emissions. Um, so this allows operators to really um, practice things 24-7 uh, in this realistic virtual environment. So what about testing uh, someone's knowledge of a procedure? Uh, everything I've shown you so far is, you know, building, learning that knowledge. But this allows you to test a, on a procedure. So what I'm going to do here is do the first step correctly. And it was this drain valve, you remember, that I physically have to close. And if you're using a touch screen, you use your, your finger. And when you confirm, you'll see that I get immediate feedback here on the left. And it tells me I got it correct in the, in the green box here on the left. So what if I make uh, an accidental error? For example, I'm going to crack open this valve and confirm. You'll see I get immediate feedback that it was wrong, and it even tracks which valve I touch, which was the wrong one. Because this is a simulator, you can try again. So I'm going to try this again, and you can correct that um, error. And you'll see that the system tracks that I had two attempts here in the bottom left. So the output of this is, is, is basically um, a documented detailed test report. And what this allows you to do, this knowledge automation platform, is assign tests to individual operators or groups of operators. Um, and you can track completion uh, as well as uh, access any test reports uh, very easily. So here I can access my test report and it will show me for this procedure. Again, it could be a startup shutdown procedure where I've been going wrong and, and where I've been going right. Um, indeed, you can also have a snapshot of where your organization is at in terms of um, the competency of individual procedures. So in this example, we have a procedure performed by shift A. And on the y-axis, you'll see the number of operators that have completed this. And on the x, the score. So 13 operators got 100%. But on the other end of the spectrum, three scored below the passing score, which was 75 uh, at 75%. So, so those three may need a little bit more attention uh, than the rest. And you can drill down a lot further. And this is getting into that data as well that Ron was alluding to. So this graph shows the uh, step number of the procedure here on the x-axis. So step four was incorrectly attempted three times or, uh, on three separate occasions. Um, and you may ask yourself why that is. So you can actually open up the simulator and analyze why people may have been getting this step wrong. And, and, and in this example, you'll see that we have two almost identical valves and the reports as well as this show that operators were opening the, the wrong valve here. So th that's the intelligence, that's the data that allows you to, you know, take a look at maybe there's an improvement for uh, training or the procedure itself. I want to finish off with what we call the field execution tool, because everything I've been showing you uh, is based on building uh, and measuring competency. But what about when you're in the field and you want to have that visual aid with you so you don't forget that, you know, drain valve or um, 
get the right sequence of the procedure. So this would be designed for a tablet. It's a very simple interface. You have um, the, the step at the top um, and then a, a picture of where that equipment uh, piece of equipment is or that valve is. And you can toggle between the detailed view so you can clearly see what that looks like and the pathway view. Once you've completed that step in reality on your tablet or mobile device, you check the check mark and you move to the next step. And again, you can access those knowledge snippets, you know, that uh, critical uh, tribal knowledge as well. Um, the purpose of this is that you have a visual aid in the field. Um, so you will not miss or overlook, uh, you know, a valve that could lead to a loss of process containment um, or making another accidental error that could shut the unit down. So with that, I'll pass it back to Ron, uh, who's going to continue to talk about um, the root causes of um, some of these environmental compliance issues. Very briefly, we performed a root cause failure analysis into some of the environmental performance opportunities and compliance issues that we see in industry today. We utilize 531 data points from public records of the EPA to understand what the failure mechanism was and what was the root cause. If you look all the way to the right in the green boxes, and as we drill down to the lowest level, uh, some of the larger contributing factors to the incidents as it relates to human factors or human errors were training insufficiencies, procedure ambiguity or the lack of procedure clarity, failure to follow procedures, procedures does not exist, and then the lack of knowledge and competency uh, relative to, to the operator who was asked to perform the task. And that comes from not being exposed, not being able to practice uh, because the plan is running and just not having a very, very good training and development process. The last chart around data knowledge is how Vuvio platform can produce actionable intelligence. Um, Christian shows you the guided learn and the test modules very briefly during the preview. The chart or the histogram to the right shows the competency level of your organization. And this can be your shift competency level. This could be the total um, competency level of the organization or the field operators. Or it could be individual operators. But you're able to see how many of your operators score above the mean how many score below the mean, and how many even maybe score below what you consider your, your passing grade or what's acceptable to be cons considered qualified and capable. This is very important data, and based on this data, you're able to develop an intervention to bring everyone up above the mean or uh, above the passing score. So there's no reason now to wonder or contemplate whether or not an individual is qualified before you assign them a task to perform. The chart over to the left side of the page shows what questions were frequently missed by all of the operators. So this is a great analytical tool that will say, allow you to go in and discover and pursue why are most of our operators missing question eight or why are most of our operators missing question nine, for example. And it could be because of lack of clarity, poor clarity, or your practice in the field might actually be different from what your procedure is asking for. So all in all, we provide a great knowledge base, automated platform that allows you to drive the improvement of your organization in operating critical operating tasks. Okay, very good. So, um, like uh, I, was, I was saying, I guess I was backstage, but uh, um, I'm the uh, vice chair of the Clean Resource Innovation Network in Calgary, uh, Alberta, and we're a group that's uh, looking at, uh, with, with a vision really of Canada as the global leader in clean hydrocarbons from source to end use. And um, I'd encourage you all to check out this group. They're called CRIN, Clean Resource Innovation Network, or CRIN for short. 
And um, this is a Canadian group, but I would encourage you all to uh, check them out and uh, sign up as a member because it is free and it gives you access to other members in this network and the LinkedIn theme area sites, which is where everything is happening there. And uh, importantly, Crin recently received $100 million from the Canadian federal government to run technology challenges and build the clean energy ecosystem in Canada. Um, and then for myself, um, outside of Crin, I'm available to help folks connect uh, from the oil and gas industry with potential partners in the digital and clean energy space and, and vice versa. And activation of those connections, uh, you know, to realize practical cost effective tech applications uh, in the industry is something that I'm personally very passionate about. And so when uh, Vuvio asked if I'd be willing to uh, speak with you all today, I uh, jumped at that opportunity to share my views. Uh, I was a customer of Vuvio in my previous role uh, as the uh, chief of innovation at, at Husky Energy. And um, although it's early days with uh, the Vuvio application there, I can tell you that uh, all levels of management and right down to the field operating staff have embraced the approach and see a lot of value in it. And so as my role uh, as the chief of innovation, uh, my motto to get people thinking about uh, experimenting more and the need for change uh, was that different isn't always better, but better is always different meaning that if you're not open to try new things, you'll never truly improve. So in that light, what I want to touch on today is the following. Um, number one, a bit about the brutal truth uh, on investment in oil and gas today, a perspective on the impacts that uh, human error have on environmental performance, and thirdly, what's within your control to mitigate human error through uh, quality training and simulation. Uh, next slide, please. So the brutal truth. Uh, for days, you know, so the brutal truth for today's oil and gas sector is that external factors are driving investors away. You don't have to uh, look very hard to see the evidence. Just read any news or current events uh, publications. And the key external factors are the volatility in, in the commodities, which in turn is fueled by political polarization and uh, demand pressures. And secondly, climate-related concerns. And uh, I read recently that uh, a recent estimate that $14.5 billion of uh, financial community divestitures have occurred uh, to date. And that's, uh, that's a lot of money uh, that could be invested in this industry that isn't being invested and deliberately not being invested. And these things relate directly to the five uh, issues that uh, Ron had shown at the very beginning uh, facing industry. And uh, to maintain and attract investment and arguably to survive, you know, you know, companies have to demonstrate first strict cost competitiveness. You need to keep your costs down. You can't afford any waste incidents unplanned, and planned downtime. You need to have high levels of operations, integrity and efficiency. And that should go without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. This could include uh, around around the uh, you know, mitigating this, you know, embracing digital solutions to identify and eliminating uh, process inefficiencies. And there's been a lot of talk about that at the conference here in the last couple of days. And, you know, and things like simulation models, including uh, you know digital twins, you know, that can play a role across you know all aspects across the full value chain. And just as important, or maybe even more importantly these days, is you need to demonstrate improved sustainability performance. You need to show that you're part of the energy system transformation. You have to reduce your emissions, particularly those related to waste, leaks, spills, etc., and eliminate any human error that might be at the root cause of these. And one option to do so is to adopt technology to enable improved performance of your staff. Um, this may all seem quite daunting, and you know, in many ways it is, but there are things that you have at least some control over. You can control the integrity of your ops, including the clarity of your procedures at your sites and the training of your staff and contractors. And as Ron mentioned before, uh, you know, process safety issues are key contributors to unplanned emissions and other containment losses. And he showed that statement where 50% of incidents during equipment startups and shutdowns have root cause and human factors, such as lack of knowledge and competency and inadequate training. So if you unpack all this a bit more, we see that the, at the root of these are problems that can be addressed by a simple well-executed extended reality solutions such as what Vuvio is offering. So of interest to me is the role of learning in a non-threatening environment versus the often noisy, distracting, and sometimes scary space of live field operations. And I believe that people can become, uh, if people can become very familiar with site locations, processes, and procedures in a safer place before entering the field, 
they'll learn faster and be better able to react to uh, life conditions. Uh, next, please. So my recommendation for you, based on all this, consider the equipment startups uh, and or shutdowns in your business. Uh, th th if they weren't followed correctly and uh, known or understood by operators, might have a dire impact uh, environmentally. Prioritize these. And remember that most incidents are preventable if uh, procedures are understood and followed. And then experiment. Try and enhance reality application like Vuvio. Start with a small proof of concept for one procedure at one facility. You know, the cost and the time commitment is low, but I, I can promise you that uh, you'll learn something valuable to help you make better decisions uh, going forward. Um, next slide, please. And so with that, I want to thank you all for listening to this and uh, apologies for the little technical glitch that uh, uh, pulled us off stage for a moment, but uh, we're back. Um, what did I cover? I talked about the, the brutal truths around investment and uh, uh, as an incentive to uh, look for ways to reduce for, uh, for reducing the frequency of loss of containment type events, a perspective on the root cause of process safety incidents, and a bit about what's within your control to mitigate. I'd like to thank the Vuvio folks for inviting me to speak. And I'd like to reiterate that as a customer, we were excited by uh, the Vuvio simulation approach. We rolled it out to a refinery for operator rounds, uh, for training for operator rounds, and liked it enough that we were planning to roll it out to other sites. I can't say for sure where the company plans to go with this approach, but I can say that I was impressed with the cost-effective, quick-to-implement solution that was easy for everybody involved to understand and use and it provided a non-threatening environment for training and ultimately forced us to better document some of our procedures. And interestingly, I note that um, this effort had an additional unanticipated result, and that is it provided a level of comfort with a digital solution that previously wasn't there. So this application, to my mind, is potentially a gateway to additional experimentation with digital applications for you know, improving processes, workflow efficiencies, et cetera, and getting back to that idea that different isn't always better, but better is always different. <laughs> and so with that, thanks, and I'll throw it back to Ron and any questions you may all have. Thank you so much, Glenn, and uh, we appreciate you taking the time to share your experience. Um, the, the last chart here just shows our contact information and uh, obviously, Christian and myself will take any uh, inquiries about Vuvio. And of course, Glenn uh, representing the Clean Resource Innovation Network, his information is there if you want to understand further their mission and strategies. Uh, just a couple of questions, uh, common questions. How long does it take to complete a project? And uh, Glenn spoke about the project um, rollout and execution. But generally, it, it's hard to tell, but if you are simulating the pr procedures anywhere from 20 to 50 procedures, you're looking at uh, 16, 18 weeks. And uh, during those 16, 18 weeks, that starts from the point we come to the plant, do our photo shoot, and then the 14 weeks to take it back and develop it. Then we deliver to you on the 16 to 18 weeks. So for 14 weeks, everything is basically Vuvio uh, implemented and operated, and there is no work required by the uh, by the customer. Uh